All right, so today we're doing a demo on the under deck oasis. Keep your uh, downstairs dry, no dripping water. These guys do an amazing job. They're gonna show us how it's done and what the process is. If you've been wondering for your own house to get the under deck done, this video will explain it all and any of the questions that you may have, let's get to it. Roofing guys, all those guys, they just flash the water. Oh, I'm not responsible for it. Flash it away. I'm not responsible. No, I got to collect all the water and take it. Because you start getting a leak here, and customers say, hey, I got a leak here. Yeah, that kind of thing. So um, it's a different mindset, and that's why gutter guys work with, you know, we're already working with aluminum. We're already working with stainless steel screws. We're already working with the siding brake for bending different stuff. So it's the perfect match as gutter guys should be installing. And we have this opportunity all around the country. Houses are finished. This is a beautiful house. Everything's finished on this house. After we get that done, everything will be finished except for those stairs, but he's still going to want to do the stairs. Well, we're doing them. We're doing them. So yeah. he's, he's rebuilding the stairs. He's switching them to three treads, so that's why we didn't do them. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this way it really completes the house. It makes it clean, natural. They may never use the space under here, but they know it's clean and it's finished. You know, you can almost plant that seed in the mind of the customer when you're doing the gutters. Like, yeah, well, you know, they'll think about it. Um, that the area, they could use the area, it would be finished. They wouldn't have birds building nests under there. It makes a more finished home, looks nice. Women, the number one reason women choose this product is aesthetics, okay? And Corey's gonna love this one. What's the number one reason that guys, what men want the underdeck product? Grilling. Grilling, Grilling. yep, right there, <laughs> yep. Smoking, they wanna have the grill underneath here. Cause you know, you got your nice grill, you smoke your food, you wanna eat it when it's hot. <laughs> But you can't even put the cover on the grill because it's too hot, right? And you forget about it, and the grill gets, you know, the cover gets water in it, gets moldy, gets nasty, and you forget to put it on, it blows away, gets ripped, whatever, looks like crap. So uh, that's the two things. Uh, hot tubs are real big. Um, outdoor bars, people put a nice bar underneath here, and this way it looks real nice. People go crazy with this stuff. Check out the Facebook page, Under Deck Oasis. You'll see uh, we have photo competitions, like at 4th of July, people decorate it all out there. The biggest uh, one we have, we have a little, uh, a little contest for people, give away $100 gift cards. Uh, they decorate their hole with, uh, uh, for Halloween. You know, it's pretty cool when you see like eight skeletons and all dressed up there inside the hot tub over there and people, it's all foggy and everything. It's really cool to see what people are willing to do to decorate it over to win a hundred bucks. <laughs> They'll spend a thousand dollars. But so it's kind of a really cool, fun, fun uh, uh, product over there. And uh, most people have installed gutters and you see when the customer comes out there and they see the gutter coming out of the machine, you know, oh, that's so cool. You know, I mean, it's, it's old style to us, but we still feel good about what we do when the customer sees that. Or when they see it up there and it's installed, they go, oh, I thought I hated gutters, but those look so beautiful. That's nothing to compare to what you get back when customers come out here and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't do that long before this, you know? Oh my gosh, I wanted this done for so long. So it's kind of a fun product to sell. It's right in your wheelhouse. Um, it, there is a learning curve. That's why there's nobody else out there doing it. It does take learning. It takes people to get right there and do it. Just like Alurex is out there, you know, showing you guys how to install it, showing you guys how to sell it. They're doing a great job. Um, it does take some teaching how to do that. So when you get a, a, a dealership program, when you're in the dealer program, you get like quarter of our package, you get 40 hours of our guys training. These guys are experts in the industry, top in the top of the country. I mean, I just say it, Aaron's the top five in the country in installing underdex. Um, so they know all the different stuff that we come got steel decks, all these crazy stuff that we run up, up to there. You take pictures of the job, take uh, several different angles, show us all of what's going on over here. And then with that information, uh, in a nice diagram showing the measurements, we'll give you guys the price. Here's the installed price. If you want us to come do it because you don't want to do it, but you're a contractor, here's what we want to charge the homeowner. Okay, if we came out and we're going to pay hotel costs, travel costs, and we uh, combine that job with several other jobs and deliveries for contracts. We have some guys that are just deck builders and they just get, they buy five decks a year from us kits over there. They do a little bit. The, the hard ones, complicated ones, they go, just come do this one. This one's not in our wheelhouse. Um, so that's how you get the price, and we tell you how that works. So that's a little bit of information there. We'll go into the nuts and bolts of the system. Um, this whole system is pitching into the gutter, and the gutter is pitched to the downspout, the future downspout over here. Um, 
and sometimes it's a twisted plane. The actual high point of this system is actually right here, right there is the high point. Um, and that, that's the high point of the gutters right there. That gutter is going that way to the downspout. This one's going this way. Again, it's more of a cut up job than some jobs. There are jobs that are much more complicated than this, but uh, the, for a beginner job, this is the one you definitely want to have our help on it. This is the rectangle ones, there's plenty of videos me showing people how to install it on, online there. So um, this, this product is also marketed under another name. It's called Inside Out. Um, uh, the factory basically came to me and says, Tony, <laughs> We're struggling. We keep selling this to a distributor, and the distributor sells it to a lumber yard. The lumber yard sells it to a homeowner. The homeowner has a contractor put it up over there. We ship the product, and six months later, everyone is pissed, okay, because no one's getting paid. The thing's leaking like crap. Tony, you can figure this thing out, okay? And so they gave it to us. We played with it for about three or four years. We changed a whole bunch of stuff on how it's installed because we're the guys out there in the field. If you Googled my name, Tony Cobb, uh, patent, you'd see a bunch of different patents I have. I'm actually more of a hands-on, how do we figure this stuff out? What can we patent and what, how we do that kind of stuff? So I worked with them, the manufacturer, uh, and I took a product called, that was a knockoff of gutter helmet. We took that nationwide, so I have a good relationship. They only make the panels for me now. We make everything else ourselves. All these carriers, all that other stuff is all made. Um, all the trim pieces are all being made in-house. We actually have gutter that is the same color as this, uh, this is teak. Uh, no, carry. Carry. This is uh, carry. We also have it in smooth and uh, under deck oasis is the only one that has the textured panels. Textured panels. See how there's a wood grain to it? We have it smooth and we have textured. Two different prices. I suggest you always sell the textured. This way, if you're new installers, tweak a panel, bend a little panel, put a little dent in it. You still can't see it. Okay? So push the textured panels until you're really good. Then you start getting something if you're ever in a price competitive, then you can go smooth. It's a little cheaper. Uh, if you had to, but I just love the texture. It looks so much nicer. Okay. Um, if the house is sterile, I say sterile, it looks like a, uh, a hospital where it's all clean, all white and clean. I'm going to stay with those smooth colors to make it look like that. Mm -hmm. But if they got natural stone like this, that's why this wood grain really pops when it's a, uh, has the more natural look rather than the sterile look. Uh, that's my suggestion on how to sell it, but let the customer pick up. We have five wood grains. We have all the components for a five inch K style gutter, including the coil, the end caps, um, strip miters. I know you don't like that word. Okay, <laughs> I've been warned. Okay, but we have base strips and we have uh, 90 degree strip miters uh, for that as well. You could use those in a six inch half round machine. I don't have end caps for that, but if you wanted to make a wood grain half round gutter, we have that. So, uh, um, so with this system over here, the key of the system is learning to flash. Flashing is the key, we flash the water in. So I'm gonna take a step up here, show you what flashing is. This flashing actually goes all the way back in here. We actually grind a groove uh, into the concrete here and we sealed it up there. So above here is sealant, is sealed. All the water is coming to here. We try to use the trim as just a supporting for supporting the panels and to trim it out, okay? In this case here, some of the other issues that we came up, come on in there, Aaron. Um, what did we have to do? We had to do some grinding. To talk about the grinding, because you spent almost the first day grinding this whole job. Yeah, so pretty much what we're trying to get a smooth surface, and a flat surface as much as possible, because obviously, you know, with the protruding stone, um, you know, I just want a flat surface. It really depends on how far you want to go. Um, I just wanted a flat surface real quick. Like, a real quick, you know, still took a half a day, um, but I've done, I've cut all the way in and inset the G-channel, where and it actually looks pretty nice like that, but if you can avoid that, that'd be great. You know, you want to, if they're going to do masonry, have them just go up to whatever and then yeah. do that. But you've got to charge a lot more anytime you go into masonry. You start going into, you know, no. uh, hardy plank or final siding, that's easy. It's all easy. Even smooth brick is a lot easier than this because sometimes you get one rock that's protruding out and you got to grind that down so this whole thing's not rocking and you have a big gap all the way across the line. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? Flashing is the key. All the way around, flashing, flashing, flashing. Um, those who want to take a look up, there's some really nice metal work. We put the wood up here to put the gutter on, so that becomes the fascia board. If you see it there, that has to be put there. We run the gutter uh, back toward the house about 20% of the time. I'm going to just throw that number off. If they already have concrete all here sticking way out there, there's no place to put a downspout, but they already have existing downspouts against the house, you can really pull it right all the way through. Our system can put a gutter out here and you can uh, use the existing downspouts uh, to drain the system. So, 
one of the rules is that you always have to have gutters above these. You can't be having any valleys dumping a ton of waters. It's these panels, the way they lock in, they're not, they could be, water could leak through if you had a valley just dumping tons of water right here on top of the deck. All right. Um, so the gutter's pitched. You guys understand that? It's all sealed. I have a good idea to step up there and take a look behind there, see what that looks like. We're going to put in some panels, and I like people to try putting in the panels. I'll show you how to put a panel in. I'll talk about how to put a panel in, um, and then we'll do it, and I'll let you practice with it. Um, one of the things that Aaron's going to do, he's actually got to put a light kit. People are asking what this is over there. We can do lights. There's a couple things with the lights. We don't do lights that are recessed. Okay, Recessed lights make heat when they're on heat up there with snow on it and it's just a pain about to make it waterproof if you're cutting a big old hole in our panels. So what we do is we put the flashing over top here so we have a nice dry spot. The water's, the uh, electrical fixture is going to be right here and then we have a half inch pan box. This pan box here, this uh, half inch, go ahead and open it up for me there. Now it's actually going to be sitting right on top of, right in, the, in between the groove, between the line right up in there. So it's actually, even everything on here makes sense for a reason. Um, it's actually going to be setting in between here. We're going to set it up in a minute, but it has this, and then we have a donut. You got the donut handy? Yeah, that's in the truck. All right, that's right. Okay, so we have a donut that goes around it so that there's not a gap between the light fixture. We don't, it's not recessed. It's not flat. Make sure you tell them right off the gap. We can't do it. Only put it this way. We've tried all those other ways. We've been doing it, experimenting with a bunch of different ways. At the end of the day, this makes it safe. It's easy for you. Um, we're going to show you this one installed. Um, he's going to be installing this one in a couple minutes. To, take, to look, show you how that can be done. Um, we charge $150 right. anytime I'm gonna put a light fixture in there. How long does the light fixture take you to make now that you've been doing that something? From start to finish, um, if I have panels already prepped up, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, so, but you charge it for every one. So, because all of a sudden you get there and they decided that when they were running electricity, the wife wants, oh, I want a light here, and I hate a light there. Next thing you know, there's 12 lights. That's right, it's right in the contract, it's 150 bucks a piece. That's it, we're gonna, for prepping per light. That's what we charge, so. We'll help you with pricing. But make sure you always get that per light fixture <laughs> over there. I always qu quote in the stairs. We only quote in stairs if they finish the riser, okay? If they didn't finish the riser and it's just steps and you can see through it, don't quote that, okay? Because then they're going to look at it and they're going to look at the, see it, the inside of our system and it's going to look goofy, okay? So only quote it if the riser. Make sense? Okay? Um, so we do those. And sometimes you get a, a nice long thing with maybe 15 feet down and they have like support in the middle of it, they might just do the top half. Um, that's how we're doing it at my house next week. Uh, just the top half uh, to make, you can do it all the way down, but it's two different pieces, break up, they go pretty, it's all the same price per foot. And typically stuff is charged, you know, 30, $40 a foot installed as round numbers. Uh, people that will pay it, they go, oh, that's way too much money. I'm like, that's fine, <laughs> okay? This is an event driven sale for a lot of people. You get a quote, I think our record is eight years from the time we quoted it to the time they decided I want to do it. I got my daughter's graduating. We're going to have a big party. I want to finish the underdeck. Okay. So uh, never give up on these sales. I'm telling you, they will come through. People are thinking about it all the time. Like, man, I want that. I want that. I want that. And all of a sudden, you know, there's a reason for it and they'll, they'll buy it. So sell them when you, when you can, but they'll never give up on those sales, but they, they know the price is going to be adjusted. Question. Who does the wiring? Great question. <laughs> okay. I always tell them to bring their own electrician. I mean, because Remember, we're going around the whole country. We have, you know, we have dealers in in uh, Seattle and Omaha and Denver and different markets of the country over there. We don't know the electrician. Okay, we just tell them to bring the gray exterior Romex. Gray is the exterior wire. Okay, bring it to approximately where they want it at. Okay, approximately. Okay because we're gonna put it right wherever this falls at, this line right there. So if they wanted the center between here, it's gonna be, you know, they might want it there, and it's gonna fall right in this line right there, okay? And it's wherever that comes out to at eight inches coming starting from the end, okay? So put it in an approximate location. Leave us a three foot tail, okay? I like to tell them don't staple it in tight at the very end because we end up taking the staple out. If they put it here, we end up bringing it through over here or a different angle. To do it. Don't staple it in tight, especially if you get the same uh, electrical contractor you're working with all the time in the same area. So, uh, like in Grand Rapids, in my home area, we have a, one guy we work with, and he brings out electrical into that. Um, or if it's a builder, because we do a lot of builder work, uh, they'll bring it, they know how we set it up. So, three foot tail, that's all we need, and then we'll take it from there. We'll bring it out there. We do not install the light fixture, we're not electricians. 
that answer your question? That's, that's correct, yeah. Other questions from here? So component-wise, there's only a couple components. There's the G-channel that goes on the opposite side of the gutter, okay, most of the time. Okay, G-channel, there's the side cap that hides the slope. Do we have, that's on the far side or is it yes. over there? There's one piece of side cap on the side. That hides the slope as it goes down. You'll be able to see it from the outside, how it slips down over there. And then, of course, there is the panel itself, and the panel is held up by two different types of carriers. Here's our standard carrier. This is the one we normally use, okay? And then here's our low clearance carriers, okay? Low clearance carriers um, are for areas where it's a little tighter, we don't have as much room worth. Low clearance carriers are used on the cantilever. If we had this deck was cantilevered out, say two feet out here, on this particular case here, we'd actually use flashing and brand that metal and bring it in over in between the cavity and bring it back to the gutter right here where my hand is, okay? Then we put a fake system on the outside, which is G-channel all the way around with the ends of the panels that are here, the butt ends that we cut. That'll fit on the outside there, but that's a fake system because I've already addressed it by taking, bringing all the water in between this bay. That makes sense? Okay, we reach back in there and we seal all of that and bring the water uh, here. That's a fake system. That outside uses the low clearance carrier. So low, low clearance, uh, clearance carriers are when you really need every bit of that inch of space. Okay, that makes sense? We're all good with that? So that's the components. Two different types of carriers. You guys already have the gutter, unless it's the... Uh, uh, one of our uh, wood grain colors, the G channel and the side cap, the two different sides. So there's not a lot of components, and then of course the panels. The panels come in lengths, like decks. These joists are usually 8 foot, 10 foot, 12, 14, 16, just like you buy lumber in the store. Our product comes like 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 foot, custom. 20% extra for anything over 16 feet. I've taken 33 foot panels to Seattle on a ranger pickup <laughs> with a ladder rack, okay? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we don't do that anymore, but it has been done. Okay, so we have long panels. We are custom panels. We're the only one in the country that makes panels that long. There's some plastic systems that are underneath there, and your product is 12 or 16, okay? So we can make it to what you want uh, up there in two-foot lengths uh, increments on that. Um, so we covered panels. We covered the two different types of panels. We covered the five colors of wood grain. We have uh, the painted colors that we have. We have eight painted colors, smooth, matte finish, or textured. So we have five, eight, smooth and textured. So that's a lot of different SKUs and all the different lengths. Every product is made to order, okay? We, do, um, we have uh, inventory for white uh, for everything, but everything else we, we make it, well, I think we're about a three week lead time for materials, but it's always shipping is always the tricky part. Right, shipping is not cheap, it's not free. Hopefully we can ship you, I talked to Augustine about run, running half round down spot out to you. He's good for that, so we'll be talking. Nice. He called me again last night for some reason. Should talk to him about pipes. Pipes. Penetrations that are, a lot of the exhaust vents are always inside. Yeah, great so. question, very good. So we have two types of vents, one we're concerned with, one we're not concerned with, okay? In the northern climate. Southern climates, you don't have to worry about it so much. But we don't want dryer vents kicking in here, or we want bathroom exhaust vents, like uh, vents downstairs that are kicking hot air through here. If it puts hot air up here during the winter, it's gonna melt the snow on top. If it melts the snow on the top, it's not, the problem's not gonna be here, the problem's gonna be over here, okay? <laughs> and then it's gonna uh, make water in here, and it's gonna overflow, it's gonna freeze, it's gonna back up, and it's gonna start dripping through this, right through the seam, and then we're gonna have an icicle down here, like in a cave, and it's going to go down there and it's going to be dripping up and it's going to be a column here. I literally have seen a column. I've only seen it one time, but the homeowner says, we never use that. We turn our heat down to 55 and go to, go to the summer. Uh, it was great for three years until his daughter got divorced and moved into the basement. And she had that fan on all the time. I don't know if she just had stinky kids or whatever, but they, they used the bathroom, a dryer vent, and they made huge, 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 huge icicles down over there. And we had to go in and replace like eight panels and a couple of the carriers that got bent because it was that big over there. But so those cases there, you either can vent it down, vent the heat and vent it down, which is the preferred way, or you can use an insulated, if it's a dryer vent, you have to use an insulated pipe and take it all the way out to the edge uh, and through the... The, uh, your beam and bring it on the outside over there. We've actually taken the cover that was here and put the pipe all the way through and then put the cover right on the outside out there. Um, so that could be, but the ones we do not need to be concerned with are the intakes, right? Intake for your, uh, um, we've got the heat pumps or just your furnace that brings in uh, the fresh air to burn. 
Uh, those are the two types of there. So you have to be concerned about that. When you take pictures of that, take a picture of that, ask the question. Uh, mm -hmm. You've got to have it. We address it on our drawing so you know that. That's a good, great question. Other questions with that? All right, another question. How often do you put a screw for those? Because I'm seeing one screw here. It's Excellent gonna... question. All right, why don't you tell them, go ahead and tell them where you're at with that. Every joist. Every joist. Every joist. So this one's just like a yeah, demo yeah, for us. Yep. You're adjusting, as he puts these panels in, he'll be putting it there to make the final minor adjustment. Got it. They're kind of set pretty close, but he'll make that final adjustment. We want to keep a little downward pressure on the panel on top of the gutter, okay? Because if somebody's walking up there, especially if it's the bigger gals, okay, <laughs> or guys, okay, <laughs> and they start bouncing up there, if they do that, it'll actually bend this up and lift it up off the gutter. So there's always a little downward pressure up there. We literally had it over there, and we found out the wife was 350. <laughs> she was saying it was down up there. So we have to make a few adjustments and we can put a little downward pressure on that. So if the panel is not perfectly straight, there's actually a little, little downward pressure at the end here. So will they squeak when you walk on top? Um, me? No. Or rattle the, the panels? Will they, they rattle? Shouldn't. They, sh they shouldn't. They shouldn't. Like from the yeah. wind, from walking? Uh, yeah. We don't really have that call that much over there. Once in a while, I have some dealers that are like, oh, I can't get it quiet. I can't get it quiet. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, it just needs to be adjusted. They spend a little more time, they can adjust it. I've seen people try all kinds of silly things. Oh, I'm trying to put tape up there. It's like, don't put tape up there. Just adjust the panels right and you'll be fine. So it can be done, right? Or just hire the professional. That works too. Yeah. Yep. Is there a price difference between like a wood grain look versus the smooth finish? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. And we'll give that. We'll give that price to you all different ways okay. when you you quote it up there. What uh, What is the thickness of the product? This is 024. 024. If you put a mic on it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. So these are uh, these are thicker than that. Good question. All right. All right. So we have a couple things that are exclusive to us the wood grain we also have a, a color that's exclusive to us i was i, I joked with uh, Corey's team over there about all the great things from michigan that you export into minnesota over there and one of the guys guessed it right away over there one of the great things that you ship from michigan to uh, minnesota is uh, was kurt cousins <laughs> okay the quarterback uh, he's from uh, michigan state and uh, we actually put uh, an under deck oasis system on his house uh, in the color of haint blue haint blue so it's been used for thousands of years uh, in the Mediterranean, and they actually make the ceiling haint blue, which is the same color supposed to be of the sky, and bugs don't like to go there because instinctively they think that that is the sky and they don't go there. So we have a color called haint blue that's exclusive only to Under Deck Oasis. So that's another option. I suppose there. you can do copper as well, right? Um, I have done copper gutters with it, but we've never made the panels in copper. And good Lord, I hope nobody ever requests that because they'd have to make this in copper. The, the G channel and the side cap we could make because we have the folder to bend all of that. But making these, I probably could make this, but it wouldn't be as strong, right? I mean, it's not, copper's not, it's, that's, I don't want copper sharp like that. It's going to, it's going to be too soft. It would dig in. It wouldn't be good. So, hmm. what all type right? of warranty comes on the, the product itself? <clears throat> so, there, I'll go over that with you. Okay. A product warranty over there. We have different warranties. A homeowner buying a kit doesn't get the same warranty as a dealer, and there's some other stuff I'm not over there for that. So, um, but only time we have issues with uh, warranty issues, um, I'll be honest with you, it's female dogs, those bitches. Okay, <laughs> people that people that let their that let their dog piss on their deck will eat right through the shit out of this. Wow, it's stupid, but it. I mean, you ever seen? Uh, it's it's, and I'm not kidding. Okay, I have had recently had um, a, a homeowner that had. Uh, a hot tub on their deck and it was eating it out and then so eating out the, the panels over there so after we replaced them one time we got another process that we we're gonna do we basically line the system with a uh, membrane I don't know what material it is but it's basically a rubber membrane on the inside of the panels to get it so they won't have that issue and another guy just he's not gonna retrain his dog and that's what we did <laughs> he trained his dog to piss on half the deck and we put rubber on the back pull them all, all the panels down and just rubberized it paint over that's the that's the kind of weird stuff that we have. Um, all warranty claims you're going to get are going to be when guys, uh, you know, a typical warranty thing is, is sealant, not sealing properly, spending the time, that little meticulous thing over there, because sometimes you are dependent on the sealant. Or if they got their flashing and it's bending back toward the house, you know, this is pitched down almost a good three quarters of an inch from there to where it's sealed back here. Um, so which kind of a... Uh warranty and installer can I give like five years ten years yeah we give a five-year warranty on our jobs our installs okay yeah so and we know if there's some cases 
where they have a beam where they have got four two by twelves put together and but then they also up here for some reason they've got three sandwich joists together that are sitting on top of that beam so if i got three joists going here and i got four four in the beam here i got water that's going in between those and it's coming through right here I got no control over that. I mean, there's only so much I can do. They need to take the deck boards off. We know that when your detailed pictures come in and we say, this is a problem area. You could get a leak here. Okay. We'll try to do some things and try to drill with our big long drills, drill and fill and put sealing up there and squeeze it together with more screws and a clamp and stuff like that. But it can't guarantee that. Water winds, you know, in those situations. So we usually, we know when it's going to be a problem. And if you do get a leak, um, either in the gutter or like you're saying along the, the header or something, is it easy just to pull out one or two panels to fix that leak and put them back in, or do you have to take out the whole system? Great question. This tool right here is what I got in my hand. Just yes, to answer sir. that question. Okay. So I'll go over to the other side over there. We'll pop a couple panels in, and I'll show you how to take one out. This is easy. Can you grab which panels those are? Yeah. Yeah. This, this board over here, that's, that's included in the... In the, the board, yeah. you got to figure out where the board's... Yep. Yep. So this is a post-construction. You got decks that are post construction where you have to add the wood, and then you got ones that have got a deck where they, they have a beam and it cantilevers over. Those are kind of the two. So. What about painting? You all the painting? We don't do all the painting because we don't have access to that. We tell, we, uh, this one here, they're going to stain. We would, if, if they did not want to stain this house, they said, no, we're not going to stain it. I don't want to stain that board over there. We were to wrap this in black to match the gutter. We would wrap it there. We don't like the, we never wrap posts. <laughs> Okay, we just wrap those pieces there. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll just take out a panel right here. Just come out here. So we know that the carriers are right here and right here. So I'm just going to move over from since I know where that is. I'm just going to unlock the panel. Okay, unlock it from there. The teeth. I'll unlock it there. I'll unlock the next one. Like that. And then I can take this way. Sticky fingers here. Play like that. Reach in here. Unlock it there. Unlock it there. Without scratching off these beautiful panels, I can pull the panel out. Okay? So there's always the trick is that last panel to get in, right? You can't do it when it's locked up like that. I have to unlock that. I can take it like this. So um, if a homeowner was concerned about their uh, the system getting clogged. Can I see that panel one more time? You have an end cap on the one side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll show that in a minute. And then you have a little bow. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll show that. Yeah, that's, a, that's that. an important detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to show I you. was wondering about that. So each one of these panels is cut. This is going into the gutter, so we don't want water to come back. So there's a couple little cuts and a bend. It's a six-inch handbrake. And that six-inch handbrake is uh, at home at uh, Harbor Freight for like 18 bucks. Okay? couple cuts over on this side here and we fold this up like an end cap couple does this cuts. come from factory or you nope, have to we cut this yep every piece is custom fit okay so you have to cut it on on the job site yep on job site because we don't even know what the length is going to be exactly sure until sure. we need it right got it yep so, so that's an important step yeah it's very important here because that's will... usually what your assistant is doing you say look here's what it is you got to cut the left box the right and we're looking at it like this we call this the lift so when i'm kissing it that's the right that's the left Gotta so it's basically a gutter. And box to the right, yep. Okay. Do you kiss them a lot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. So take it, slide it up like that, put it up like that, and I'm going to put this inside here with my fingers. Like that. Like that, and I can push it back over. Locked in. Okay? Hurricane's not going to do this. These panels are... You might think you can make a little noise and you can't get them out. Okay, you got to know that combination. You got to have a tool like this to do it. I did, I was in a pinch and couldn't get one of these. In a pinch, in a pinch, I was able to make a siding removal tool out of a free tool at Home Depot. Those little paint can openers they got, oh, yeah. I was able to get that in there and get that in a pinch over there. We slightly damaged it. This is nice and wide so it doesn't damage it that way. So, who wants to try to throw up a panel? Who wants to be my first guinea pig? Somebody. I'm making the video. Oh, okay, yeah. I I'm busy. All right, so we're <laughs> right, So I'll show you how to do it, and then I'll let you do it, okay? This is good. You got nominated, Chris. Yeah, the small Italian guy. This will make fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I got your back, buddy. Do we have a bigger ladder for me to get up there? 
<laughs> all right, we're the same size. All right, so I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna slide it just this next to this edge. I'm just right. gonna tip it in like that. I'm gonna slide it like that and slide it over. Okay, and I'll measure it up to there so it's there. And then I'm gonna reach and get this first one right here. Gently like that, like that. I lock this slide in, lock this side in, like that. I'm gonna push up on just like there and go like that and it's in. Pretty easy, right? Sounds It's awesome. like putting paint, because all the work was already done. He's already done all the work. Putting the panels in is like the last thing you're throwing paint on after you've already prepped the wall and did all the prep work and got it up there, so. Okay, cool. Do it while you're on your phone, just like you would be on a real job. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> For my first time. Oh. Man, oh, oh, no, we have to go this way chicken. first, right? Yep, <laughs> you gotta go this way. Okay. All the way to that, the left all the way in though. All the way in. Yeah, right. All the way in. Yep. That's probably the fun part, finishing it up. Yeah, it can be. The prep is always the annoying one. Yeah. Alright, so you just adjust the screw to the height of the... So no gaps. No gaps, a little bit of pressure. You start off kind of the same way. That's nice, it's already pre-drilled. Yep, and they're exactly uh, spaced out so you can wow. space the carriers together and keep running. Nice, nice. So you have shorter panels here and then taller ones here to to make that slope happen. Yes, we're in a I was wondering about that. This deck actually flows yeah. with the system. So, huh, I thought you just lowered the whole panel with the screws longer. Well, so that's... Normally this would stick down. Yeah. Um, but because of the deck actually flows with the system itself. Um, that's smart. That's why I have to switch to this. Yeah. And then I was still able, because I have standard carriers. Yeah. Finish right here. Yeah. And I had to switch back over to these. You got it. So it just it keeps going down. So my panels <laughs> Professional, professional. <laughs> Super exciting. Can I tell you, a half a thread means a lot. We get this question, you're going to get this question a lot, especially if you sell gutter protection. People go like, you know, hey, is this system going to clog up? Well, I showed you how easy it is to clean, right? How you can just take one, you can, uh, a zip tool, you can, get it, uh, you can get access to it. But if you know that they have so many trees that are so close to this thing that you Google map could not see the deck, in those cases there, I always tell them that if it's a problem, an ongoing problem, because it's not, okay? If it's an ongoing problem, then we can make cut a couple of your deck boards with an X-Acto tool, cut the, the um, deck board just in the area above the downspout because that's where you want to get access to clean it because it's going to clog in the gutter, right? So if you had access to that, we could do that. We need to just put a couple pieces of uh, joist alongside the joist so you can have nice 
uh, make it look really nice for them to get access. I've said this a dozen, dozens of times, and I've never had to do that because it doesn't clog. The one job that we have clogged, we could not see the house up there. We didn't install it. The deck boards were three quarters of an inch apart. There was that opaque wood. I think they were like, had already sold it for price and trying to save the wood. <laughs> um, and a woman could not walk on that deck with high heels because she would have broken her ankle for sure. It was actually in Seattle um, area. Uh, in that case over there, we were able to uh, make some access points for that job to do that there. Uh, wasn't a, they had the long needle pine needles that don't corrode, don't erode, or, you know, what do you mean, erode? what's the word I'm thinking of? <laughs> Digest, decompose, decompose, decompose yeah. There wasn't, uh, it, they were in there. So we cleaned it out. She never called us back. That was like 2012. Um, so it's not been an ongoing issue. I just tell them, hey, if you got stuff up there, if you blow it off, you don't want that on your deck anyway, right? So blow it off, keep it, keep it clean. If it's a concern, or if it's that couple months or a couple weeks that the pine tree is giving off a ton of needles, you know, throw an outdoor carpet on it or there if you're concerned about it. It hasn't been an issue, but you know, from a gutter standpoint, you know, I'd like to hit, you know, that that sweet spot somewhere between ninety and one hundred fifty dollars per hour after I pay for materials. <laughs> you know, that's what I need. Um, on a job, um, on under decks, you know, we're shooting between two and three hundred, sometimes four hundred dollars an hour to put the system up. So what we're getting, um, we have the ex additional expense of travel that's not most guys have that, but we charge two hundred dollars a night for a hotel, and we have to, we amortize the whole trip over several jobs or, and, tra and travel. So the whole expense, we have a little formula worked out. So when, when typically when Aaron comes to coming to Minnesota to do jobs, he'll leave my shop on a Monday morning. And he won't get back to the following week. He'll probably get back by Tuesday because if the homeowner let him work Sunday, he'll do it and then get back. So uh, typically the guys will get back on you know Wednesday, Thursday, and then they'll have like four or five days home. Then they go back out again. Um, so I can't do the whole country continually. We'll burn these guys out. So I'm trying to consolidate back to just the tight part of the Midwest. And so that's why, you know, Corey, I need a dealer here. We're coming here so often and we hate driving around Chicago that bad. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll but, just bring you material. Question, do you water test it before you leave or? Generally not. <clears throat> just, wait, just wait for the phone call? <laughs> 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 uh, sometimes we feel that way and some people are like, do you even water test it? It's like, I, there's not usually need. If you spend the time sealing it, water testing it there. I, I don't, I've never had a leak over there. I've tested it when it had a leak and then we go back and fix it and they want us to, to make sure it's there. I prove it to them. Okay, now it leaks. Here's the leaking before, now it's dry. And afterwards, I'll get them to, uh, that way I can get paid. <laughs> water test it, that's usually what I want to test. So you gotta install a two by six for that light fixture? Yeah. What happened what would happen if you didn't have room for that two by six or that, that two by to be there? <laughs> See the oh, so it's bolted it down? So I have to cut it. I have to actually inset it now into this. So any of the dealers here that are not already on board with us, uh, any of gutter contractors, if you sell an underdeck, uh, buying that underdeck through the month of August, you get a official underdeck oasis cornhole game, valued at over two hundred fifty dollars custom with your order. Where's mine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got one. This one. Yours was yours was delivered like three weeks ago. Ah, the guys yeah. took it. Yeah, yeah, I can tell you signed for it. I, mean, I think his name was. Uh, was it the Tony, guy, Tony Cobb. Oh, no, it's, it's just said production manager, so the old production manager walked away with it. Yeah. Nice. Basically, another heavy duty structure to support the light, or a fan. Or, yeah. or a boxing. We also bag. get a lot of people who decide they want to put. Uh, work around TVs, so we got that all of a sudden is in your way, you show up to do an install and there's a big TV up against the wall, and now it, you know, we got like this much room above it, now we have to be concerned about this TV. So you gotta ask about those questions ahead of time. What are they gonna use the space for? Uh, what do they wanna put, you show up there, and there's a bunch of other wires sticking around that they want to incorporate 
the infrared heaters to make it nice and warm underneath there. And so you, those are kind of questions. Those are those little obstructions. One obstruction is not an issue, but when there's like six of them all in one area, then it starts to really uh, adds into the labor factor uh, in the job. Again, two jobs that are both 300 square foot, you might be able to get one done, you know, for 8,000 and the other one's 12,000. It, it's the same amount of materials, but it's the labor factor can be high. And you really, if you, if you think for any reason that this job might take more labor, you definitely want to give us all the pictures for that to see that. Uh, height, if the deck is like 12 feet in the air, 13 feet in the air, or if it's an uneven surface, I don't have an even surface here. I got a bunch of boulders, like I saw some pictures of somebody else's deck, to work around. Okay, now I don't, it makes it really difficult to work because I'm constantly moving my ladders over here. That can drastically add up. Or even an unfinished surface, like you're building a house and they don't have concrete yet, and they got you know, clay on there that's hardened and you can't even get your ladder to sit level. It's dangerous, it's, it takes all day, it just makes it harder to work on a ladder when you're balancing up there. Those little things, guys, can add a lot of time and make a job. The installers go like, that was a nightmare job only because the ground was uneven. All right, and I've been to a job up in, I believe it was in Portland, I went to a job, I got there, all the pictures were beautiful, nice easy pictures, but then when I got there, the thing was 16 feet in the air, I had to go buy an extension ladder to install the underdeck. Luckily, it was only like a seven foot back, so it wasn't real wide. I could make it work, but that was, those were the very deceiving photos that the, they sent us. Yeah, Port know. Portland's really high, for sure. Yeah, yeah, so you just have to get all the information, and we can help you out with that. You start adding three of those factors involved, and it makes it a lot harder to do. Now i got to grind 16 feet up in the air. That's, that's, that's crazy. So not every job is, is a job you want. So you even sealed the wire. Yeah, I think it was yep. done. Wow. So, yep. Like push up. Yeah, obviously underneath it, seal the hole. Wow. Um, regardless, like, no matter what, water will always get through here. It doesn't matter. Like, you would have been saturated in the heavy How long ago was that? A couple weeks ago? No. So waterproof. Nice. I was thinking that only probably would have trimmed that branch back, but it's not. That was Tony and Aaron. I was going to say, that's the first time I've sticking down. Gotcha. What do you do if you like, so say like this job right here, uh -huh. obviously it's complex already, but you bid it and all of a sudden you get here and then all of a sudden they put a TV up and all that stuff between that time frame. Yeah. Like how do you, like, it doesn't affect like the material issue stuff. It's just more of a labor intensive thing right. at that right. point, correct? Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we just talked about, you know, in your contract, you talk about obstructions. Okay. What's obstruction? Uh, and you talk about access to the job site. So some people are like, no, you can't. You can't pull your little trailer in my driveway. I gotta be parked way out there here. You know how much more work that is to haul all your stuff all the way out here? People, accessibility to the location, especially if we go to a place like San Francisco. <laughs> One way street, it's up a hill like this, and I got a trailer, I got no place to work. We literally have walked away from jobs because we literally had to go in the house, down through the whole house over there, but the, what was it? Only like this much room to work with, and you couldn't even get a box of materials through there because this lady was a freaking hoarder. Okay, we literally walked away from the job, so. Um, but to answer your question, you got to have obstructions. Here are the listed obstructions. There are no, no other ones. It's, you know, no lights. You know, um, so you put a price on that. And you, you have the advantage. You can go. To I was job. more curious on like if it affects like you get to the job ready to go and do it, and all of a sudden there's a bunch of different stuff that they did after the bid. Mm -hmm. Like the material really doesn't change anything. Right? It's, right. Just, it's more of a labor thing. It is totally. Okay. Right. Right. Because right. that way you can't get all yeah, the don't pull off the job and you don't have this or don't have that or don't have that. Yeah. They start showing up and putting up cameras and computers and all this other stuff. Down there. Okay. Yeah. That was ten minutes. Pretty quick. It's not done yet. No, it's not done yet. <laughs> well, the light, the light is done. Nope. Nope. No. no? <laughs> oh. So you got these little blocks that are up inside there. Yeah. Two. The white blocks right there. The white blocks. Those go up there and just make it so that when we, these blocks are specifically made, so that they don't squish. That when he squeezes this in tight. We got special screws that we use to screw this up there. We don't want to make this so it squeezes this tight. We're trying to, I want to say, trying to make it uh, less discretionary to the installer <laughs> about crushing panels, because you could literally crush a panel. Do we get the light kit from you? You can, and it's, oh, we prefer that, yeah. So, luckily, Aaron had extras in there. <laughs> <laughs> that just comes in a package, everything. Yeah, it's the package in there. Everything all the way into, we actually even have, like, the staples. <laughs> Because you're going to readjust it. There's like two staples for electrical line in there. Um, you've got these pieces in here. These are go inside just above here on both sides of that ridge, so you don't crush it. 
and the screws that go up there to put it in there. And even the hole, which hole you could use, is that these are, we pre-drill the holes in there, so the screw goes right into it. We don't use the holes that they have. These spacers here are also part of the, to make the course where we want. Um, everything is on here, this thing is exact. We tweaked it down. We put this little sign on here saying, hey, don't pull on this cord, okay? Because uh, we get electricians start pulling on it, and he seals above it. I don't know if you guys saw it when he sealed above that wood. They're sealing over there. So even somebody went power washer on the side of this thing, um, that it should never leak. Demonstration yeah, complete. All right, there's the finished product. All done and ready to go. Beautiful. Not working on his knees to bend the panels over there, but we uh, we spent the big bucks. Can we get a conclusion of why you need the system? Yes, the system is here for women. They say it looks beautiful. Men say, this is where I want to put my barbecue. Or some people just say, look, my house isn't finished till I get an Under Deck Oasis product. Amazing. It looks amazing. But it's usually like you get the, I'll be in my man cave, smoke cigars, and then the, the wife takes over because it's so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice job. Thank you for showing us. And uh, we'll be looking forward to getting some work done from you guys.